So this video is a day trip to York. It's about a day trip to York. And uh, I got there very early in the morning and I wanted to explore the town without lots of people wandering around. Now this is the famous street, the Shambles in York. And this street has been around a very long time. And it's kept the traditional buildings here, like the old Tudor buildings. And you can see the old, by the way, the overhanging, uh, the shops underneath, and the window frames, the wood panelling on the outside of the buildings. Um, there's something romantic about Tudor buildings. Um, and I just love looking at them and it just makes t it just takes you back to the past and it was really nice wandering around the street early in the morning so this was around 6 30 a.m. when there was nobody around because it is a very narrow street and I wanted to have a good look at the shops because when it's packed and it does get packed you don't really notice the character of the shops that well because there's people in front of them there's people busy and up and down going in and out and so it's nice to see the character of the architecture have a proper look at the windows and and the ancientness of it if that's a word the cobbled streets um I have been to York a few times and I have wandered up and down the street in the past when there's been lots of people there and I haven't really appreciated the street um, but when you're going down the street when there's nobody around it makes you appreciate it that much more so you can see these old bare windows and all the little signs above the shops um, reminds me of when I was in Salzburg because they have a street like that with lots of little signs above the shops which is like an olden day thing so it was really nice looking around there's a market behind those stores um, that wasn't open that early look they've even got a Christmas shop <laughs> and it's the middle of summer so that Christmas shop must be there all year round. So this is just outside the York Minster. And you can see it's still early morning. There's not many people about. Now this Roman column was what I was interested in. Because it's been there a very long time. It was found near the Minster. Um, and it dates back to early Roman times. And you can tell how old it is just by looking at it. So you can pause the video there and have a read of the sign of the Roman column and you can see it dates back right to AD 71 by the looks of things. The building behind the, the column as well is I think it's a really interesting architecture. In the windows a look gothic type architecture and I don't know what that grass is in front of it but it really sets it off as well. a very tall column so you don't need to go to Rome to have a look at the old you know the old columns you can come to York <laughs> yeah. so there's a picture of the column and the minster in front of it there so another thing that caught my eye is this little statue We'll see there this statue. Now scaffolding on important buildings like this is a photographer's nightmare because you don't want to go somewhere to take a photograph of an ancient building for it to be covered in scaffolding. Um, unfortunately uh, uh, it is covered in scaffolding but at least part of it is photographic. So here we are with uh, this little statue Constantine the Great.
and he was born in AD 274 and he died in 337. He was actually made an emperor, a Roman emperor in York in AD 306. So this is the uh, York Minster, very big, very grand, huge high ceilings. It doesn't give me the um, intimate feeling I get from some other cathedrals. Like I, I really like the Newcastle Cathedral, if you've seen my Newcastle video, I love the architecture inside of that cathedral and I like Durham Cathedral but the York Minster I think it's a bit too big and I don't think it's as interesting as the Newcastle Cathedral or the Durham Cathedral. There was a fire in 1984 and it destroyed the rose window you can see there and it's now been repaired back to its former glory you can see in this photograph. The fire was caused by a lightning strike they believe um, but it was really quite devastating at the time. So we're now going to go on a bus tour. see some of the buildings have bricked up windows on the first floor. This comes from the Georgian window tax. In 1696 a law was passed on which owners were taxed on the amount of windows their property had. To avoid paying this tax, windows were bricked up. These days when something is expensive, you'll hear people say that's daylight robbery. It is possible this saying comes from the old tax. You either paid up or lost your daylight, hence daylight robbery. The political church of St. Peter in York. It is both a minster and a cathedral. The name minster derives from the Latin monasterium. From here, the local monks would go out to teach or minister. It is also a cathedral because it contains the throne of a bishop. This is taken from the Latin cathedra and means seat. In York's case, the seat of an archbishop. The present York Minster is the fifth church to be on this site. The first church was just a small wooden chapel put there in 627 AD for the baptism of King Edwin of Northumbria. The central tower has 275 steps to the top and the views are breathtaking. York Minster also has one of the finest collections of medieval stained glass in the world. The great east window is the largest in the minster and tells the story of the Bible from Genesis through to Revelation. So this is High Peter Gate. So down here is Bootham Bar. So it's a gateway at the bottom of the street. And this gateway has been in this there has been a gate into York since AD 71 when the Romans built a gate into York. That particular building was built in the 11th century. So it's quite an interesting street to walk down this street. Um, if you want to leave your luggage, if you don't want to carry your luggage around with you in York, there's a place down the street where you can leave your luggage. Um, you do do a lot of walking. <laughs> I think I did 11,000 steps and I was only there a couple of hours. 
Um, there's gifts and souvenir shops down here and the toilets are down here as well. If you go through the gate, just on the left, there's some toilets. Cost 40 pence to get in, but you can use your, your bank card to, to pay for it. You don't need the coins. This is the hole in the wall. Used to be known as the Bodin. In 1816, excavations of the Bodin revealed a dark secret. A hole was found which led to a dungeon where chains, chains and manacles hung. A tunnel also found was bricked up by a superstitious builder because of accounts of eerie footsteps that echoed from the darkness. These footsteps, it is claimed, can still be heard today. <gasps> What's that? A very narrow tunnel. I'll just have to explore and see where this leads. It comes out in a sort of a square, like a residential square. There's the minster. Oh, I wonder what's up this back lane. It's nice to go off the beaten track sometimes. You never know what you'll find. What's caught my eye is this house further up with the blue shutters outside. <clears throat> you don't very often in this country see windows with shutters like that. Unless the old buildings. But I think they look kind of cool, and with the bikes outside. It's like going back in time. So let's go back down this eerie little tunnel. And let's head towards Booze and Bar. So, 11th century building. It's got lots of little nooks and crannies, this town. Looks like it's got little places to sit. <laughs> so, uh, if you offer a toilet, go along here. And there's a plaque just to tell you how old it is. So let's just have a look at this black. So the plaque marks the site of the Porta Principalis Dextra or northwestern gate of the Roman fortress of which the foundations as rebuilt circa AD 300 lie just below ground. So if you come to York, you have to go on the ghost walk. It's a great deal of fun. You'll have a great time. I loved it when I went on the ghost walk. Um, it tells you where to meet here at 7.30 every night. And you meet up this street in the street of Stonegate. So you must go to that if you're in York. So here's Stone Gate. So it's in this street. Now further along, uh, near the Shambles, is the York's Chocolate Story. Very popular with visitors. Um, I haven't been in myself, so I just know that it is popular and it's one of the tourist attractions in York. So if you see the York's chocolate story, you know the shambles is just around that 
corner it's the first street you can see there as you go around that corner that's the shambles if you get lost that is welcome to Clifford's Tower Clifford's Tower is the largest surviving element of your castle once the centre of government for the north of England. The original timber tower, which stood on top of the earth mound, was burned down in 1190 after York's Jewish community, some 150 strong, was besieged here by a mob, trapped. They eventually took their own lives. The building of the present stone tower began in the 1250s during the reign of King Henry III. about scaffolding before. <laughs> Clifford's Tower would have been a really good place to take a photograph but unfortunately covered in scaffolding and I don't even think it's open. It normally is open, you can wander around inside. So let us go down to the river instead. If you can just see there on the right that's a brand new bar that's going to be opening in a few days time and it's, it's a beach bar in the middle of York. So here we're going along the river and I think this area is such a pretty area. It has like a cycling path, people jog up and down on here and uh, the river is so beautiful and, and, the, and the, the water is so calm at the minute so you've got beautiful reflections in the water. Such a beautiful day today as well. So we'll just have a little wander down this path. With some boats further down. Nice place to live next to the water like that. And there's boats come up and down this river as well. So beautiful. So here's the new beach bar. I think it would be quite fun sitting on one of those benches having a, an alcoholic drink in the nice sunny weather it, with the sand beneath your feet. Um, so it's not open yet. Well, not while I was here, but have a look, see it's open between the 24th of June and the 5th of September. And there's the address, York, Y zero one, Y O one. So this is the York dungeon. Now this is another must go to if you're in York. 
the York Dungeon. Um, they have actors who are dressed up and who give you frights and they have um, a mock court, at least they used to have a mock court and uh, it was where, and, and they show you how Dick Turpin um, was hanged and things like that, they show you people bricked up behind walls when the plague was around. I don't know if it's still the same because it's been a, quite a few years now since I went inside of the York Dungeon. Um, it's probably even better than it used to be because it has been a lot of years. Um, so the York Dungeon, it is a must visit, 12 Clifford Street and you can book tickets online at uh, dungeons.com forward slash York. So there it is, the York Dungeon, uh, a must visit if you're in York. This is another part of the river and another bridge. Just going to have a wander up here. see what's across the road on the other side. Another most place to visit is the Jovic Viking Centre. So if you're in York, don't forget about the Jovic Viking Centre. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip to York. I'll leave you now with some photographs of this famous street, the Shambles. Bye for now.